Hello and welcome! If you're as excited as I am taking a look at that screen, I have some good news for you. We are going to build exactly that in this and the subsequent video. The subsequent video, however, is contingent on the feedback on this video. So in this video, I'm going to show you how you pull live prices via the Binance WebSocket API with Python. In the subsequent video, we are going to do the deployment, meaning we are going to show a local website doing exactly what you are seeing here. So a live price updating dashboard. You can make a lot out of that. So that is just the baseline. So you can also just pull the live prices and see the top movers and any other thing you can think of when pulling live prices or also the sequence of life prices, calculating short-term returns, longer-term returns, and so on. So this is going to be super interesting, but the second part, the deployment part, is some work, is a lot to code, and a lot to go through. So I will do it if this video is going to get 1K engagements, and that's pretty easy to achieve. So. Just everyone watching this video, you tell five people to also watch the video, of course, all the way through. Give it a like, or if you don't like it, give it a dislike, and so on. Background here, I urgently, literally urgently, need your help, right? My views are dropping, and also the tears of my eyes are dropping because of that. So as all of you, I need to fuel my Porsche, so help me in achieving that. Thank you very much in advance. And as said in this video, I'm going over pulling live prices. And in the next one, we are building something fancy like that. And just as bonus, I think at 1.5K engagements, I will also show you how you can deploy that to an online server completely for free. So that's the bonus. So Flask app at 1K, 1.5, we're going live with that. So do your job as I'm doing mine. Thank you very much. Take it with a grain of salt, obviously. So let's jump into the live price pulling part. All right, let's go over the script step by step. This Python script pulls real-time cryptocurrency prices from Binance using WebSocket. We'll use threading to ensure our WebSocket connection runs continuously without blocking the main program. First of all, library imports. We need WebSocket for WebSocket communication. JSON for handling JSON data. So all data from the WebSocket comes in JSON format and threading for running concurrent tasks. Threading is used to run the WebSocket connection in the background. That ensures that our main program remains responsive and can handle other tasks concurrently. For example, in a Flask app, more in the next video. Threading allows us to handle HTTP requests while maintaining a live WebSocket connection. That is why I'm setting that up using the threading library. It is also perfectly fine doing it without threading, but as we're using threading anyways in the next video, I'm going over it using threading in this one. These are just some initialized variables. so pretty much self-explanatory. So latest prices stores, the latest flowing in price from the web socket and the allowed symbols are simply the defined symbols where you want to get prices for. So Bitcoin, ETH, BNB, Solana, Ripple, Doge and Cardano. Next up, we have the functions to handle web socket events. So on message, on error, sorry, on close, on open, so what is every of those doing? And on message processes incoming messages, on error handles errors, on close manages the web circuit closing and on open subscribes to the price updates when the connection opens. So let's go into those functions more detailed. So what is this one doing? Whenever a message is coming in, we are loading it with the JSON module. So we are just getting a Python dictionary out of the JSON object, 
and then we screen for the symbol, pull it in lowercase, and then convert the price, which is stored in C in that dictionary, convert that to a floating value as it comes as a string value from the API. And then we simply store the symbol in uppercase letters for better readability. You can also store that in lowercase letters. It literally doesn't make any difference. It's just for, uh, yeah, just for convenience. So this is just, as you see, indexing the dictionary and then is storing the price for that symbol. So as an example, if you have Bitcoin flowing in, a Bitcoin price flowing in, then you get BTC, USDT in capital letters, and then you have a mapped price to that, let's say 60K, and then you have an entry in the dictionary, BTC, USDT, 60K, all right? And this is just simply printing it out. Now, whenever we are getting an error here, so I have a try exact block here just to be sure. Hopefully that doesn't catch up, but just if we are getting anything wrong, we are getting a feedback here that we have an error processing this message. Not much to say for on error as it simply prints out whatever error is occurring. Same story for on close, it just tells you that the connection is closed. On open is important because you send that to the WebSocket API and you need to provide some parameters to the subscribe message you are sending to the server. So first of all, the message has to be in JSON format. So that is what this one is doing, JSON dumps, and then translates this, as you see, Python dictionary format into a JSON format. So the API is understanding what you want from it. And what you want is you want to subscribe to a certain stream, you pass certain parameters, and then an ID, which is just a parameter you have to pass here. So that can be anything. But these parameters have to include what you want to pull. And you see that you're just pulling symbol at ticker for symbol in a load symbol. So you simply pass those symbols to the API and, and tell the API, hey, I want to get live prices. So live ticker prices for those symbols. So I'm subscribing to those prices. And then you send it to the API and then as a response, you will get live prices for those symbols. As simple as that. Then, very easy, you just start the WebSocket to initialize and also start the WebSocket connection. And this function simply sets up the WebSocket with our event handlers and runs it indefinitely, as you see here, run forever. So that is obviously just the URL from the WebSocket API, so you can find that on the Binance API docs, and then you just define what is happening on message, on error, and on close, which we defined above. Then we have WS thread, that is just running WebSocket in a separate thread, as said in the beginning. So to keep the WebSocket connection running without blocking the main program, we started in a separate thread ensures the WebSocket runs continuously in the background. As said for now, not that relevant later on when running the Flask app. A very good practice and very convenient and in some cases even necessary. This block here is just keeping the main program running using an infinite loop. So that ensures the WebSocket connection remains active. So what I also did here, I just set up a keyboard interrupt to close the WebSocket connection. So whenever I'm doing stop the script, the connection is closing here. So let's run this and see what we're getting. Can you please take a minute to tell us about your notebook experiences? It's awesome. So let's ignore that. So, and as you see, we are just getting live prices for the requested symbols in a stream here. So you see every second this is updating and you have implemented a live stream of prices from Binance using WebSocket and threading, congrats. And with that, you have the fundament to build the live price website. 
I'm very much looking forward into that, or not into that, but to that. And I thank you very much for watching. I hope this was exciting, interesting, valuable for you. And as said, looking forward to seeing the upcoming video. Bye-bye.